Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar from Ohio Recovery Housing on the Recovery Housing Repairs Fund and the associated application. My name is Danielle Gray, and I serve as the Executive Director for Ohio Recovery Housing. Happy you're all here with us today to join us um, to talk about this um, application and fund. I know we have a couple people just signing in. So while they're signing in and getting logged on, I'm gonna let you know about a couple handouts I have for you in the handout section. One is a copy of today's slides. So if you would like a copy of today's slides, they are available for you in the handout section. And the next is the recovery housing draft action plan. Um, this is the, the plan that was for the funds from the Ohio uh, Development Services Agencies that was submitted to HUD. So it's a, it's a helpful resource um, to learn more about these funds and kind of where they came from. So those are both available for you in the handout section. My recommendation is if you want to keep them after today's webinar, that you download a copy to your computer. Because if you don't download a copy to your computer and we exit out of the webinar, the handouts will disappear and you won't be able to get them back. So if you want them for the future, please um, download a copy to your computer. Okay, so uh, jumping right in about these particular funds. These funds are a part of the US Department of HUD Recovery Housing Pilot Program. And this link here in the slides brings up and shows you uh, the handout that is in your handouts section that is the that I was talking about. It is the Department of Development program years 2020 and 2021. Those are the funds we have available now, uh, the Ohio Recovery Housing Program Action Plan. And so you can read more about the plan um, in, this, in this document, but that is the source of these funds. So these are federal funds that have come from the Department of Housing and Urban Development. A portion of the funds were provided to Ohio Recovery Housing to distribute for critical repairs to assist recovery homes in meeting quality standards. So a small portion of those funds have made up this Recovery Housing Repairs Fund that we're hosting the webinar about today. And so our objectives for today are just to talk about eligibility for the funds. So who is eligible for the funds, what the funds are for, we're going to talk a little bit about the process, how to apply for the funds, and then frequently asked questions. So questions we get from all of you about uses of the funds, and then open it up for any questions that you all may have on the webinar today. Uh, there is a question box within GoToWebinar. I highly recommend that you drop any questions that you have in there. Chances are, if you have a question, someone else on this webinar has that same question. So be helpful to others on this webinar and be sure to ask your questions so we can answer them for you. So eligible properties, uh, properties that meet the definition of recovery housing in the Ohio Revised Code. Also, the property must not be currently certified by Ohio Recovery Housing. The intentions of these funds were to increase the number of certified properties within the state and increase access to certified recovery housing. So if your property is currently certified um, and it remains certified, it is not eligible for funds. Only properties that are not at the time of the review uh, certified are eligible for funding. And also, this is new. Uh, the property must either be owned or leased by the organization operating the recovery housing. Now, what funds, uh, what the eligible uses of the funds are varies depending on if you own the property or if you lease the property, but both people who own properties as well as lease properties starting July 1st, 2023 can apply for funds. And so the definition of recovery housing, it, this is within the Ohio Revised Code. Recovery housing means housing for individuals recovering from alcoholism or drug addiction that provides an alcohol and drug-free living environment, peer support, assistance with obtaining alcohol and drug addiction services, and other alcoholism and drug addiction recovery assistance. So recovery housing is a very specific thing within the Revised Code. It is not about the people who live there, but the environment that's created. 
So simply because a building houses a person with a substance use disorder does not make it a recovery home. It has to meet all these requirements within the Ohio Revised Code in order to be considered a recovery home. And these funds are only for recovery residences. They are not for adult care facilities. They're not for treatment centers. They're not for homeless shelters. They're not for any other housing type. They can only be used for recovery housing. In order to be eligible for funds, the property must apply for a high recovery housing certification. And so this means that the property must have policies and procedures in place for the recovery home. And we will review those policies and procedures as a part of the application process. You must have your staff and your appropriate programming in place based on your level of support that you're applying for for the house. And that appropriate programming is currently being implemented within your house. So you are ready to go for certification. And the, again, the intention of these funds is to help people like just come up to quality and meet that quality standard so they can have their properties certified by Ohio Recovery Housing. You must also participate in an on-site visit. So you must fill out your application, have your policies and procedures reviewed, and then have us come out and visit on-site, perform an interview with you, as well as look at the dwelling. And then at the end of that on-site visit, you will get a report that lists any uh, quality improvement recommendations that we have for you. And the funds may be used to address any eligible recommendations that are listed on that on-site report. So if you don't have that on-site report, we can't provide you funding. So you must apply for ORI certification, go through the process, and get that report and then you are able to apply for any eligible uh, recommendations that are on there to address any of those recommendations. But again, if you do not have that report, if you don't apply for certification, we cannot grant you funding. And the types of uh, quality improvements you're able to address or the um, eligible uses of funds varies. Um, depending on whether or not the property is owned by you or leased by you. And so we'll get into that in a little bit. And so also another eligibility criteria is property is not currently certified. And so the property address where the repairs are taking place must not be currently certified by ORH. And so you may have other properties that are certified, but the exact address where repairs are needed must not be currently certified. So say, for instance, you own a property on Main Street and that property is certified, but your property on Maple Street remains uncertified. You have fiscal property improvements that you need to do. Like you can you can get that. You can use the funds to make improvements that are recommended by reviewers for that property that's uncertified on Maple Street. However, if you need improvements for the house on Main Street, unfortunately, you would not be able to apply for or be eligible for grant funds for that house because it is currently certified. And the property can be owned or leased by the organization or the county board. And so you must submit appropriate documentation regarding ownership or leasing the property. Um, so we see that it is appropriately owned or, or leased by you. And again, this is a change starting July 1st. Previously, we only granted funds to organizations that owned the property. Now we are permitted to grant funds to organizations that are leasing the property for select purposes. So they are not eligible for the same suite of um, eligible expenses as those that own the organization, but there are certain expenses that you can apply for if you lease the property. And so the eligible uses of funds for properties that are owned by the organization is that you must first must provide the documentation that the organization owns property and um, we are not able to provide funds to individuals and so if you have a situation where you where you own the business and then you also own the property and it looks like the property is owned by a person we need some sort of documentation that shows that it is the organization that owns the property not just an individual uh, because you as an individual are an individual separate from your organization and so we need to see that the organization owns the property 
And so there's several types of documentation we can accept. You can accept a contract for deed. We can accept um, tax records, tax statements um, that show that the organization owns the property. We can accept records from the county auditor. We just need some sort of formal documentation that shows that it is the organization that owns the property um, because that is who we're providing funds for, to the organization. We are not able to provide funds to individuals um, who are essentially landlords of the property. And so eligible uses of funds include installation of required safety equipment. So if you need to install uh, smoke detectors or you need to install fire extinguishers, things of that nature, installation of egress windows, uh, installation or repair of kitchen cabinets, appliances, or installation of other pantries and food storage space, purchase of essential furniture. Um, and there's a small caveat here. If funds are being used for beds, we will not buy bunk beds. Uh, we will buy two single beds, but we will not buy bunk beds for recovery homes. Um, so you can uh, so you can get beds, but they will be single beds, not bunked beds. Uh, also, eligible funds are installation or repairs of, appli of appliances that are not in good working order. So if you have a stove, but it needs a repair in order to work, we, you can apply for funds to have that repaired. Um, repairs of health or safety hazards, such as broken windows, loose tiles, torn carpet, um, things of that nature. And then fees to cover the costs of removal of unsafe structures or associated debris. So if your fence in the backyard is falling over um, and it's a safety hazard, you can apply for funds to have the fence you know, removed and um, have the debris uh, removed from the property. And then for leased properties, so this is a much shorter list. So if you lease the property, you are only eligible to apply for funds for essential furniture. And the same caveat there for purchasing beds, you can get single beds, but you can't get bunk beds. And then also purchase or repairs of appliances that are not fixed to the property. So for example, um, if you need a stove, a stove is something that's you know not fixed to the property, um, but the uh, uh, water heater, furnace, things like that, those are fixed to the property. So we, we are not able to provide funds for anything that is fixed to the property. So furniture, yes, but things like furnaces, water heaters, windows, roof repairs, those are things that are all fixed to the property and we cannot provide funding for those if you lease your properties. And ineligible uses funds. So this is for everyone, whether you own or lease the property, we cannot provide funds for rental subsidies, new construction or purchase of buildings, staff salaries or supportive services, replacement of appliances or other items that are currently in good working order, installation or repair of items that are not needed to meet the quality standards, uh, any routine maintenance, we cannot provide funds for routine maintenance, and we cannot provide funds for routine supplies or consumables. So no food, linens, cleaning supplies, dishes, we cannot provide funds for those items. Um, and again, I would become aware of what items are, are essential for quality standards. So for example, dishwashers, those are not an essential item that is needed to meet quality standards. We're not permitted to provide funding for dishwashers. Um, so if, if you were hoping to use these funds to install a dishwasher, that is not something um, that we can use those funds for. Also, again, everything that you know, you want to apply funds for funds for, it needs to show up on that quality improvement report. So if the reviewers come out to your property and they think that, you know, the windows are, are fine, you know, they don't see broken windows, they don't see anything that's leaking or causing damage, you know, and it, windows don't show up on your report, you know, if you apply for funds for windows, we're not going to be able to give you grant funds for that. It really is to help people come up to these minimum standards. It's not to do your routine maintenance or to make upgrades to properties that already meet the minimum standards. So jumping into the process 
funds are provided upon reimbursement. So this is really important. So this means that you must complete the application, have the application approved, and then you will complete the repairs. And then you will save your documentation, including your invoices and receipts, and submit your final receipts and invoices to ORH along with documentation that the repairs were completed. So if you are getting um, your kitchen cabinets repaired and you know you will apply for the funds, we will approve that as, um, as a repair that we'll reimburse you for. You will have your contractor perform uh, the repairs and then they hand you an invoice, you will pay the contractor and then you will submit that final receipt um, that you paid the contractor to us along with the documentation, you know, saying like, hey, the repairs are completed. Here's, you know, photos of my completed kitchen cabinet repairs. And then we will provide reimbursement. In some cases, we may request a second on-site visit. So that way we can verify that, the, that all of the repairs were completed. Um, and we will make that visit and then we'll say, hey, looks like all the repairs are completed. We have your appropriate documentation. And then we will provide you with your reimbursement. And so just some important notes here. In order to be eligible for these funds, you must agree to participate in the ORH Outcomes Tools. Um, we do need to collect data on these funds. And so when you sign your application and you accept funds, you are agreeing that you will participate in the ORH Outcomes Tool and you will have your residents fill out those surveys when they move in at six months and when they move out. So if that is not something you are already doing, um, that is something that you will be required to do in order to get these funds and um, have those funds used. So if you are not familiar with the ORH outcomes tools, you can sign up for a training on our website. You can ask us any questions. We offer monthly webinars on the outcomes tools. Um, so please do sign up for that if that is not something that you are already engaging in. And then also any repairs that you are going to uh, be doing, they must be completed by a licensed contractor. So this is not a time to just hire a friend who says they can do it. You know, it must be a licensed contractor, somebody who can, again, give you that good estimate of what it's going to cost, somebody who can give you an invoice and at the end and let you know that, um, that the funds have been paid. So we will, um, so you do need to use that licensed contractor in order to get reimbursement for your expenses. And so how to apply, and I am going to bring up on this screen here, the application, it's quite a simple application. You will see here the introduction, kind of everything we went over today, in case you need a reminder, eligible uses of funds, ineligible uses of funds, and then the other application process here. And then here you will type in your organization name and then the address where we're going to send you mail. So like when we send you that reimbursement check, where do you want it to go? So make sure that that address is an address where you're prepared to get mail at. Put in your address and then the name of the person responsible for the application. So if we have questions on the application, who do you want us to talk to? And you'll put in that person's name, their email, and their phone number. And then you'll give us a little bit of information about your property. How many unique individuals does the property serve per year? And you'll put that estimated number in there. And then we just want to know, are parents allowed to have their minor children live with them at this property? You'll tell us yes or no. And then tell us if your recovery home um, serves any specialized populations. And now, again, this isn't, you know, we're not prefer giving anyone preference based on the answers to these questions. This is just required data that we need to collect so that way we can do reporting to HUD and to our state partners um, on, on the houses. So you'll answer those questions for us. And then you'll give us information about the house where these repairs will be made. If you have multiple houses, you'll submit an application for each house. So you will say, hey, this is for my house at this specific address, put in that address. Let us know what county the house is in. And then you'll tell us, is the house currently certified by ORH? Again, you need to say no in order to be eligible. And then has this home participated in a dwelling review as a part of ORH certification? 
and then you'll say yes because that's what you need to do in order to be eligible. If you say no, we'll have to return your application. And then you will upload the report that you have gotten after your um, certification review visit from Ohio Recovery Housing. So you'll choose that file and upload that file. And then it'll ask if your organization owns the property listed above, and you'll say yes, and you'll upload your documentation of ownership, or you'll say no, and then you'll let us know, hey, is it the county board instead who owns the property? Um, but then you will have to upload your file of where you know your organization is leasing the property as a recovery home and the landlord is aware that the property is being used as a recovery home. You'll give us a brief description of the repairs that are needed and um, how they're, you're, you're going, these repairs are needed to address the issues identified in the dwelling review. And so if it is not crystal clear from your dwelling review um, and the repairs that are needed, um, if that's not crystal clear, then this is your opportunity to make that clear to us. So, um, so for example, if in your, uh, if in the dwelling review, they said, hey, you need to uh, repair the ceiling, and then within your application for funds, you're like, hey, the gutter outside needs to be repaired, you know, because that's what's causing the leak in the ceiling, then this is your chance to explain that to us and say, hey, I know gutter repair isn't on the, the certification reviewer's report, but it's important that we fix it because that's what's causing the leak in the ceiling. So I need X amount of dollars to fix the gutter, and then I need X amount of dollars to repair the ceiling in the bedroom, and then X amount of dollars to refinish the painting and whatever. Um, so this is your opportunity to make things really clear, because if it's not clear to us when we're looking at these documents, then we might deny that expense and say, hey, nowhere on this report does it say that you need a gutter repair. So, um, so make sure that it is, that you use this space to be crystal clear about how each expense that you're asking for funds for is tied to that report. So that way we can give you the funds that you are requesting. And then give us um, a timeline of your plan for completing the repairs. And so we, uh, we give you three months and up to six months. So we really want to see that the repairs are completed within three months. But if your project's going to take more than six months, contact us uh, because we want to be able to, you know, we're supposed to be using up these funds quickly. And so we, you know, we, we want to use up the funds and give them to people who are going to be able to, to use them within our grant timeline. So if you need more than six months, reach out to us and we'll see what we can do. But we really want to see projects that can be completed within six months. And then here's your, and then you're going to upload your budget. And we gave a brief example budget. This does not need to be fancy, but what we do need you to do is list out each expense and the amount that you're requesting from the repairs fund. And then if it's a huge expense and say it's over $10,000, that's the, the limit for these funds, then you might say, hey, we ORH the repairs fund, we're going to apply for $10,000 for that, but the extra $2,000 is gonna come from another funding source. So we see the total amount and the total amount that you're requesting. Um, again, it doesn't need to be fancy, but we do need you to put together a small budget. And here's just an example. So you'll upload your budget, and then we'll also need an IRS W-9 form. Uh, so you will upload a W-9. Again, this should be for your organization. We are writing a check to your organization. Do not submit a W-9 for you as a person, submit one for your organization. And then if you have any other supporting documentation um, that you wanna upload, again, to help us see how what you're requesting is linked to that report, um, here is where you would submit, um, submit that. And then your total request for the property. Again, the amount, maximum amount of funds is $10,000. So if you say, if you request $15,000 here, we're gonna return your application because that's over the maximum of $10,000. So, so put in here a maximum of $10,000. And then you'll indicate your agreement to the following, that you understand that the application, submitting the application doesn't mean approval. 
So before you go and spend a bunch of money thinking you're going to be in reimbursed, you have to wait for approval. We have to approve the funds. Um, you understand that we'll be contacting you by contacting the person that's listed on this application. And if they don't respond to us, then we may deny your application if we have questions. So make sure whoever you put on this application is going to be responsive to us and that you're putting in the correct information, the correct email address, the correct phone number. Um, and then funds will be provided on a reimbursement basis. So this means that the repairs are complete, you've paid the costs, and we are reimbursing you for those costs. You also understand that it's your obligation to participate in the ORH outcomes tools in order to receive funds. And then you're certifying that to the best of your knowledge, everything in the app application is true and accurate. And then you'll say you agree, because um, if you don't agree, then your application is going to be returned to you. So, and then you will submit the form. And then once you submit, you will also get a confirmation email um, to your email address saying, hey, you know, your application has been submitted and we are reviewing it. Okay. And so just some tips here when you're putting together your budget and your application, especially for your budget, list each expense separately. So you take up multiple lines to make sure that each expense is listed separately. So that way we know, like, this is what you're applying for funding for. Um, because we may not be able to approve every single expense that you have listed, but we want to approve as much as possible. So for example, like I said, dishwashers are not an eligible expense but refrigerators are. But if you put, hey, refrigerator and dishwasher on the same line, um, we cannot provide funding for a dishwasher. So we're gonna have to deny that item. So break it up and say, hey, a dishwasher for this amount or refrigerator for this amount. And then hopefully everything's eligible and we're able to provide funds for everything. But if we notice something like, hey, the dishwasher is not eligible, we can just cross that one out and still give you funds for everything else. So list each item separately. And then again, make sure each expense is a tie to the recommendation on the report. If it's not clear, use that um, text box on the application to make it clear to us, to make your argument about how that expense is tied to the report. Um, get a good estimate for the expenses as well. Um, we, we want you to be able to maximize these funds. So, um, and they are provided in reimbursement. So say you got, you're like, hey, I want $1,000 for a refrigerator. And then you went out and you bought a refrigerator for $300. We're only going to give you $300. And so you could have used that other $700 on a different expense. So, um, so make sure you get good estimates um, for your expenses and what they're going to cost. So that way you can maximize the funds. Um, and we can, you know, and when we pay you um, out the money, you know, it's, it's, um, it's as close to what you estimated as possible. And then again, we can only award $10,000 per property. So please make sure that your total request is $10,000 or less. Um, certainly, if you don't need the full $10,000, apply for whatever you need. Um, that helps us provide more funds for, for more people. But certainly, we, we do want you to be able to maximize that award if, if at all possible. All right, and so now here I'm going to check the questions box and answer any questions you have. So let me just pull up the questions here. Okay. So somebody says they familiarized their, uh, myself with the NAR housing standards before my certification came. I asked to have several things tagged in my expense report because I understand that this is your grant in advance. My certifier still didn't note any of the suggestions. What should I do? Um, you can reach back out to your reviewer and ask you know, what happened. Um, but the, again, the reviewers are trained to look at the minimum standards. And so you might think that your house needs a dishwasher in order to be um, what you want it to be. But in our standards, like there is no requirement for a dishwasher. So even if you call us and say, hey, I really think my house needs a dishwasher, the reviewer might say, well, no, that's not a requirement. I'm, I'm not going to put that on the report. And therefore, you, you can't be eligible to get funds for it. 
But if there really is something that you feel was missed, um, you know, contact your reviewer and you know have that discussion with them. And then, um, but again, they're looking for the minimum standards, and these funds are to help people come up to the minimum. You know, not to go above and beyond. Like like I said, with with dishwashers. I mean, I love dishwashers, but it, it's not a part of the, the minimum standard. So, and I, we have a story here about the ceiling repair um, it was cited by the certifier when the contractor came to the repair, he noticed the moisture from the roof, but the certifier did not, um, and he recommended a roof replacement. Um, and, and again, tie that, you need to use that box to tie that roof replacement to that repair noted in the, um, in your budget and in the report. So there is a whole section in the application where you would say, hey, this is what happened. And you would type out this exact question. A ceiling repair was cited in my report when I had a contractor come out to give me an estimate. They said I needed to replace the roof because moisture was coming in and it would continue to happen if I only repaired the ceiling. So that's why I'm submitting you know, this estimate for a roof repair, which will address this issue. And so that way it's clear to us what's going on. If you don't explain it and you just submit for a brand new roof, then we don't know the story and we won't be able to approve that expense. But use that space there to tell us that story and um, apply for those funds for the repairs that you need. All right, and then is the egress window supposed to be a supportive option to make a bedroom safe? If so, how do we apply for one of the certifier did not acknowledge the basement bedroom? So again, if you didn't have that base, if you didn't have a bedroom in the basement at the time, then the reviewer doesn't know that you're planning on using that as a bedroom. If you had it, have it set up as a bedroom, and they know like, hey, you need to install an egress window here in order to use this as a bedroom, then they're gonna note it on the report. So, um, it's, so again, the funds are gonna make you come up to the minimum. Um, it's not to help you like add, you know, redo a space um, in, in the basement that you weren't currently using as a bedroom. So, um, and yes, each, according to our quality standards, each bedroom needs to have an egress that meets your local uh, building codes. So if you are applying for funds to install an egress, it is up to you to make sure that that egress is gonna meet your local city codes. And, um, and, and that's what the funds should be used for to make sure that you have an appropriate egress in each bedroom that meets your local city codes. And so you said you can apply for safety things like smoke detectors, fire extinguishers, egress windows, and such. Are you saying that we can apply for these particular things if our certifier did not mention these in the report? So again, if your certifier did not put it in the report, then we cannot approve funds for it. So, but if the certifier is there and they notice that you don't have smoke detectors in any of your bedrooms, they'll put that in the report and then you can apply for funds to purchase smoke detectors and put them in each sleeping room. And then is there any funding for already certified houses? And no, as of now, there is not. The house needs to be currently uncertified when we come out to do our visit in order to apply for funds. So unfortunately, if your house is already certified, um, we cannot apply for funds. Again, we are given these funds with the hope that we would increase the number of properties that are certified in the state and um, allow more people to access certification with use of these funds. So unfortunately, we cannot give them to properties that are currently certified. And can the property be in the owner's name and the organization name? Uh, it needs to be in the organization's name. So we need to see that it is the organization that owns the property or leases the property. It cannot be in an individual person's name. So we, we just need to see the organization uh, being listed there. 
And can the funds be used for mattresses or just bed frames? Um, yes, it can be used for the entire bed. So we require that each bed have a bed frame and a mattress. So we, you can use it for um, the, the, the whole kit and caboodle if those items are missing when we do the on-site visit. So you can use the funds for those. Again, just we, we cannot use them to purchase bunked beds. But if you have a double room, you can purchase two single beds and two mattresses. Um, and then similarly, if you are um, homes for you know, children or moms and babies um, and you need a, you know, a crib, then it can, you can purchase a crib if you are serving that population with the age appropriate. All right, so I have one that's not a dishwasher. It's an exterior gutter and overgrown vegetation. It was tagged at one property, but not another because they didn't go behind that particular home. I'm thinking I can email them pictures. Again, if you have questions, like contact your reviewer, like contact them and say, hey, you know, this is something that the contractor noted at one property, it's also at the other property, just get in touch with them and explain your situation. Um, and then you know, have that discussion. And again, use that dialogue box on the, um, on the application to, to explain what you need. Um, so that way it makes sense to us about why you're applying for funds to address things on the report. And then how long will funds be available? Through the end of 2023. Um, and we will be giving these out until they are gone. So, it, and we, we do have quite a bit of funds left and we just got another pot of funds to distribute. We hope we can, this will be a continual source of funding, uh, but we right now will just say we are giving them out until they're, they are gone. And then my basement bedroom is currently used as a basement bedroom as a sofa bed in it. Um, can I ask the certifier to update the report accordingly or is an appeal necessary? Um, again, reach out to your, to your certifier. It might not have been clear to them. And um, if it's just a sofa bed, they might've thought that it's just a room in a basement and not you're not counting it as a bedroom. So be clear too with your capacity when you're having your review, this is the total capacity, this is a bedroom, you know, really like walk people through when you have your review. Just contact them and explain the situation. Also um, for our quality standards, sofa beds do not count as beds. So you will likely also get a recommendation to purchase a bed for that room. You cannot Sofa beds do not count as a bed for someone to sleep on every single night. So just um, something to note there that when they saw that, they probably thought it was just a general room um, and not a person's bedroom that someone was going to be expected to sleep in every single night. And if the property is leased and it's noted on the review that they need fire extinguishers or smoke detectors, can funds be used for those things? Um, uh, so yes, I would say so because um, as long as they're just like the standard smoke detectors that you can like detach from the ceiling um, and not one of the fancy wired uh, smoke detector systems because it can't be fixed to the property. So like when you move out of the house, you can take that fire extinguisher with you, you can take the smoke detector with you, right? So those are things that you can take with you when you leave. And so you can use, um, they're not fixed permanently to the property, so you can use the funds for those. But we, in a leased property, you cannot use it to install like um, one of those fancy fire suppression systems above a stove or the wired um, system for smoke detectors because you, you wouldn't be able to take that with you once you left the property. And then are you able to share the slides or the copy of the presentation? It is in the handouts section. So you can download a copy of the slides and also a copy of the slides will be on our website on the repairs fund application page for you all to find and download. So, and also a recording of today's webinar will also be on there for you as well. 
Yeah, and and I understand some of these frustrations that you guys want to increase homes. However, uh, what about helping maintaining already certified homes? I'm with you. I didn't write the rules for this one. Um, these rules were written by the Ohio Department of Development and the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. So we are with you with advocating to have um, the, the eligibility of the funds expanded so that way we can also assist certified operators. But unfortunately, that decision was not made by us. It was made by other parties um, when, they, when they submitted this plan to HUD. So I, I'm with you, I feel you, but you know, we, we don't get to make the rules, we just have to enforce them for this in this particular circumstance. So we have a friend here from the New York State Alliance of Recovery Residences. Um, hello, and yes, so if you want more information about how our state is using these HUDS funds, um, we're happy you're here. Um, yeah, and let us know how your state is using um, these particular funds. If, if you think it's going well in your state, we always wanna learn from other states. So, all right, and, I, and I'm getting another question about seeing the basement bedroom. Um, and, and again, please just um, contact your reviewer. I don't have your specific application and thing up in front of me, so I cannot give you advice on your specific application and what happened during your on-site visit. I would just, again, encourage you to contact your certification reviewer, have that discussion, and, um, and if the report is unclear, you can ask them to make changes to the report. So just, um, but I, I unfortunately, I don't have that in front of me, so I can't give you that individualized information. So, and, and I see that somebody says that more close, homes will close without assistance. And, you know, again, I, I feel you, we're advocating to expand the eligibility for the funds, but, that decision was not made by us. Um, whenever we will let everyone know when these funds are there, there isn't it's supposed the state is the Ohio Department of Mental Health Nature Services is supposed to be establishing an advisory group for the implementation of these funds, um, not only these repairs funds, but the larger HUD program that includes funding for other things as well that we do not control. Um, and so we will let everyone know about that so you can have a chance to raise your voice about that. And then also when the state has to submit updated plans for these funds, we let everyone know. We do that through our advocacy committee and that is the perfect time for you all to submit comments and advocate because that's when the state can make adjustments. And so we will let you all know when that happens. You can bring those feelings and opinions out and advocate for those changes. All right, so how many occasions can I go to the well or how often can I qualify for the $10,000? Um, this is for each property. So if you have two properties, you can submit one application per property. And, um, and that's the maximum amount that you can apply for per property. But if you have multiple properties, you can apply once per property. Okay. And then, all right. All right. And if repairs are already made, can you be reimbursed? And no, they need to be approved first and then you make the repairs and then we provide the um, the reimbursement. So you have to get that approval first before you make the repairs. And somebody just said for windows, and um, again, you can, um, it, if it's noted on your report or they're like, or like I said, similar to the, to the roof situation, if we notice like, hey, you need to fix, um, you know, the, the flooring underneath the floor is warped or, or your flooring is warped or whatever. And then you discover like, hey, it's because the window's leaking, so I need a new window. Like you can apply for funds for that, but it, as long as it needs to show up on your report 
it, it can't, we can't give out funds. Just people are like, hey, I need to replace my windows. That's just something I want to do. Um, it needs to show up on the report as something that's essential for a repair. All right, how did eligibility expand? Beds and furniture was available prior to non-owners for the first um, application. So um, yes, if eligibility expanded in before July 1st, we were only allowed to provide any funds to organizations and organizations must have owned the property. We were not allowed to provide any funds at all to organizations that leased the property. Uh, but now we can provide funds for limited, for those limited eligibility reasons for those that lease their properties. So that was how eligibility was expanded starting July 1st. Okay, and they said, understand the fund is available at one per property, but can the same property get funds, reapply, and then re re receive funds again a year later, two years later, or how often? And then, nope, it's just one per property. You cannot keep applying for these funds year after year. Um, and again, it's only available for uh, for uh, those properties that are, are not certified. So once you get the funds and you become certified, um, you know, it then you know you would not be eligible into the future because you are already certified at that point. Um, but it is one once per property. Uh, up to $10,000. You can't apply again a year later. And are you still only taking two weeks or less for approvals? Um, yep, that's about our time frame right now. Uh, we review the applications and we generally get back to you on whether or not funds are approved within a couple of weeks. Um, that could extend based on like workload and the amount of applications in, but that's you know how we're how we're going right now again it's a rolling application so we we accept them at any time we'll keep accepting them until funds are gone and then we will um, approve them you know as we have time to review them and get that information out okay i think i answered everyone's questions if i missed your question um, you can retype it into the box um, I'm not seeing any new ones. Again, I'm going to show you here on our website. I'm going to go to ohiorecoveryhousing.org. So you can see our website and then up here, resources for operators, recovery house repairs fund. You'll see information about the fund. Um, you'll get a link to the application. And then we'll post the slides as well as today's webinar here as well. So you'll be able to have access to all this information into the future. Okay. All right. Um, can you suggest whom to contact funding for funding EX rent repairs? Um, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, but if you're looking for other funds besides these funds, your local county boards are definitely uh, the place to go for information about other funding opportunities. Um, other places like sometimes, um, you know, hardware stores and things, they'll have like community days or community projects where, you know, that you can, if you're a nonprofit, you can engage with them and they might provide some resources or help, um, you know, I think like Home Depot had one in the past. There's also Make a Difference Day, which is annually in October, where they get a bunch of volunteers together and um, they assist people in the community with projects. And a lot of them are small home repairs, things like that. Um, so, and I know that's not something you would do if you need like a licensed contractor, but they can help with, um, you know, more general upkeep things that you might otherwise need to hire someone to do. So those are the types of resources that are also suggest looking into in your community. And then somebody asked, does the house have to be up and running? Um, and yes, yes, this is, you have to have all your policies and procedures in place, all your staffing in place, you know, your programming's all in place. 
and then we come out and we do that interview. So you have to pass that program interview that we're going to do with you. And then we look at the dwelling and we'll see, hey, what do we need with the dwelling in order to get this place um, up and running? And somebody said, if you have a four bedrooms and no beds, but your surveyor doesn't cite you for having beds, are you disqualified from asking for support with beds? Um, and, and yes, um, that would be a pretty big miss from the reviewers. So that would be something that you should submit like a complaint about because um, if our reviewers missed like and didn't put on your report that you didn't have furniture, um, that's a that's a large oversight from them, and we want to hear about that. So, um, but yeah, anything if it's not on your report, um, you know, let us, you know, um, then, and it, and if it's, it's such a huge myth, like hey, I didn't have any furniture in the house and they didn't note it, like that, that's a, a really big deal, and so we we, we want to hear about that outside this this grant. All right. Okay. So um, that is, I'm not seeing any more questions, but also on our website over here, you have our email and our phone number. So you can reach out to us if something occurs to you. I'm more than happy to answer your questions via email. Uh, thank you so much for joining our webinar today. Um, check out our website of all of our other resources. We hope to see you throughout the certification process or any of other of our trainings or, um, or events that we have. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I look forward to working with you in the future.